Hi everyone, CDC here. If any of you have seen my previous video regarding installing Sega Dreamcast games onto the Pandora's box games console, then you will know I promised to do a PlayStation walkthrough. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna waste any time um, chatting. I'm gonna show you the three scenarios where you are gonna come across when installing PlayStation games onto your Pandora box. The first being when there's a single bin and a Q file. The second being when there is multiple bins. And the third being when there are multiple disks. So without further ado, let's crack on and I'll show you step by step how you can install each of these three types of games and the tools that you will need to deal with a couple of them. So let's do it. Okay, firstly, you will need to open a web browser and go to a website called CD Romance. And then we're gonna search for, first of all, Spider-Man. I've already been running through these to do tests. So um, it's Spider-Man 2 I'm looking for. I'm actually running Spider-Man on the Dreamcast. So, but they don't do Spider-Man 2 here for them. What do we want? PSX, there we go, for PlayStation 1. Why it's PSX, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do when they get to PlayStation 10. I think we're currently on PlayStation 5, but hey-ho. Not my problem. Uh, you can see there's only the uh, USA version, so we will click, go through, scroll down to the download link, and we will click to download. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the domain name from up here, so I can type it again, and paste it in another tab. And for this one, we're gonna look for Tomb Raider, we're gonna do the first Tomb Raider game. We again want PSX. There we go. And what I'll do for this one is I'll install the Europe version. Scroll down. And there we go, the Europe zip. So now we've got those two downloading. Open a third tab. I've already copy pasted, so I can do uh, and the third game we're going to download is Fear Effect 2. Essentially, we want for PSX. And here we go. I'll download the uh, USA version. All right, as you can see, this game has four discs. You're going to have to download each of the discs. So let's kick that off. Disc one, disc two. Oh, yep, you will sometimes get this on their sites. Obviously, they have a lot of people downloading all the time and you can get this too many requests. Just click back, click the one you wanna download again. There you go, and it started downloading. Um, the most I've ever managed to get downloading at one time has been six downloads. But generally, I find four normally before you start getting this too many requests issue. But let's see if we can get them all downloading at the same time. Uh, we've still got problems. Come on, you can do it. There we go. So, yeah, we've got all six downloading at once. You may sometimes have to click back and click the link to try again. Um, it's not an issue with the site, it's just you can imagine there's a lot of people connecting, downloading a lot of large files and so the servers need to try and balance that and stop too many people taking too many files at once. Okay, so what we're going to do is while they're downloading, I am going to now open a, another tab, cdmage.dance-music.org. And this will download the Mage tool for you as a 7-zip. Then all we want is to change the CD Mage to PSX, the number two PSP, which is basically PlayStation 1 to PlayStation Portable Converter. And that utility is what we're going to use to convert the multiple disc games. So now that we've got those tools downloaded, let's go and see how our download's doing. Yes, 
going to take another 10. This one says 25 minutes to download. They do speed up. Um, these aren't accurate. Um, they fluctuate on how long it's going to take um, due, I assume, to the amount of people that are downloading. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it all download and I will cut to once it's all ready and I will follow you through the next set of steps. Okay, so all those have now downloaded. I've actually moved them to a subfolder called Games. And in here you will see I've got the four discs for the Fear Effect 2, the Spider-Man 2, the Tomb Raider, as well as the PSX to PSP and the CD Mage Utilities. Um, also I've got the XML template that we will have to edit and create for each of the games that you install. And don't worry, I will give you obviously the template and a link in the description so you can download this off of my site. So first of all, let's start with Spider-Man. Before you can do anything, you need to extract the zip files. There are many ways of doing it. I use WinRAR, I'll put a link to WinRAR for you, but you can use 7-zip or it might, you might even be able to use a zip built in Windows. Whatever compression program you use is entirely up to you. So that's extracted. First of all, what we're going to do is rename it to the naming convention to make it easy to identify your games if you go to the SD card that's built in. And also we need to get rid of any funny characters that are in Spider-Man 2. Underscore, enter. Go. So we have now renamed that folder to PSX underscore spider hyphen man two underscore enter electro. We now need to take the XML template. I'm going to hold down control so when I drag it does a copy rather than move. So I get a copy of that template. Okay, now I've dragged that into there. Before I go in, I'm going to rename this folder. Do control C to copy but not actually change anything. All I'm doing is so I don't have to type that again and again and again, because once you go in the folder, you need to rename them to exactly the same. So that's what I'm going to do. Rename, just by Control V paste. So rename, it highlights all but the file extension. If your operating system is set, so you can't see file extension. You need to go and look up how to do that. Um, so you can see file extensions. Control V, there we go. So now we've got all our files called exactly the same. First thing we need to do is edit the Q file because it's currently pointing to the old bin name and we need to edit that. So control V, there we go. So it's now correctly pointing to the bin we've named it. Because this is basically a pointer file that tells it what files to use in the game or where certain parts are the indexes. Closed, remember to save. We've now edited the Q file. We've rename the bin file and we've got our XML which we now need to edit. So first of all we need to check the game emulator we're telling the Pandora box to use which is number seven for PSX or PlayStation 1 games. I'll bring the list up and it's also included in the link that I provide you. First of all let's go down here where it says ROM name and we need to Again, control V, highlight everything up until the extension, control V to paste the name. It just makes it easier, so you don't have to keep typing everything. There we go, so yeah, just check. The reason we've got our MP4, we will go and get that from a site called screenscraper.fr. Basically, when you're in the Pandora games console, in the games list, as you go through the games, as you highlight a game, a little video game clip will play, which gives you an indication of what the game is and what it's like. Um, so we will go and get that in a bit. So we need to put that in here. So the XML is picked up on the install and all we need to do is get a few details to fill in now from the website. So back to Spider-Man and it's Spider-Man 2 USA version. So that's Control C, full game name. Control V. And what I tend to do in, in the details, I've not actually seen anywhere where it displays this information in the Pandora box that I'm aware of. I always just fill it in with exactly the same as the name I'm giving it. And then let's just check, scroll up. The game is a 2001 game. It's by Activision. So we all put 
to manufacture it again. I don't know where it actually stores this information and what it's used for, but let's fill it in because it's to hand easy. It's a one player game and it's an action game. So number two, again, I'll bring the list up for you and it is supplied in the download links for you in the description. So let's just check Emulator 7 for PlayStation, 2001, Activision, one player game. It's a action game. We've got our Q, Bin and MP4 to renamed and we've given the correct name down here, which will show when the game's being installed. And also that's what we'll be put into the games list in the Pandora box. Okay, so we're done there. Let's click save. And that's Spider-Man done. Nice and easy. Whenever it's a single bin, you just edit the Q file, rename everything, edit your XML file, get your video that I will show you how to do right now. You need to go to screen scraper.fr. There we go, screen scraper.fr. If it's not displaying the language you understand because it is a French site, come over to this left side here and select the language you want so you can understand some of the websites. If you haven't registered, the registration option is over here. Um, it does, it's free to register and you don't need to do anything other than a simple form um, with your username and password. So once you've done that, I've already registered obviously, so I'm just going to log in. And here we go, the site's come up. So first of all, we want to press P to jump down to the P's and select PlayStation for the system. And we are going to search over here for their spider hyphen man two. Click search. Because I've already searched in here, it's given me the option. It's remembered my searches. Otherwise you'll obviously have to type that in yourself. Click search. There we go, the game's come up. Down here, we want to click And then make sure you select media from this middle menu because we want the media files. And then when you scroll down, there's the video that was uploaded and we want over here the standardized video. You can see the difference in size when they standardize it. So the original was uploaded uh, and it was 2.33 megs and now it's only 1.03 megs. So on a blank bit here, right mouse click, save video as, and make sure, yep, there we go. Or we go into the folder, we need to do the old rename, control C, because down here, you want to save it as the same, control B there, so. Then go into the folder and click save. And then if we do a show in folder, you can see now we've got our bin file, our Q file, the MP4 game clip video, and our exit file. So there you go, that's that one done. Simple as, couldn't be easier when there's a single bin. However, it does get slightly more complicated now when you have scenarios where there are multiple bins, for example. So that's what we're gonna do next, and that's Tomb Raider. So first of all, again, we need to extract the Tomb Raider folder. And again, I'm going to rename it so it's PSX underscore tomb with the space radar and get rid of the brackets in the Europe. There we go. Again, we need an XML template, so hold down control, drag, let go. And it will do a copy rather than a move. And in there, they've given you a Little link to their website we don't need that and I knew that this one had a folder within a folder so it means I'll show you now when we go into the subfolder where the actual bins are as you can see there's 57 of them and a Q file so we don't want to have to sit there and rename all these and edit the Q file and edit the XML file with 57 bit I mean what a nightmare we don't want to have to do that so we need to use a tool that's gonna to sort that out for us, which is this CD made. So go back to where you have it and extract. And go into the CD made folder and run the executable. It will open up the program interface GUI and click file. We want open. It always opens at temp for some reason. I want my downloads and games. There 
we are and we go into the Tomb Raider folder and into the subfolder and scroll down and select the Q file. When we open it, it will read the Q file and bring all those bin files in. There we go. So it's now loaded them all up. You can see all 57. A lot of them, as you can see, are the audio because anyone who's played Tomb Raider would know it has um, a lot of really nice music and specific music depending on where in the game you are. Um, so yeah, that's what all those different bins are, the different audio files. So what we're now going to do is just click File, Save As. We want to go up one. So we're in our PS Tomb Raider folder. And I didn't do a copy of it, so I'm going to have to type it. PSX underscore Tomb Raider dot Q, because it's a Q file. And what this will do is not only will it um, create the Q file, it will create a single bin file and it will rename it as that file for us. And inside the Q file, it will give it the name that we've given this. So we won't have to do any editing of the Q file. I'll show you that in a second. Let's just click save. When the save options come up, don't touch anything, leave it as it is, just click OK. That will whiz through. Click OK. Now we can close the CD Mage program, go back to our Tomb Raider folder, and there you go. As you can see, it's created a Q file for us with the correct name, and a Tomb Raider bin for us with the correct name. I just go in to edit. Remember, if when editing these Q files, it, it, you don't have anything associated, you want to do open with and then choose notepad. Because I'd already done this, it's associated notepad with it. That's why you can see the notepad icon. So I just do edit. And as you can see in here, you don't need to go into this file when you do this method, but I'm just showing you that it's renamed correctly to point to the right bin. And it's now turned all of those individual bins into an index track and index. So now all we've got is one bin file with a Q file that correctly points to where everything is. So we are going to do the old rename control C to copy and then rename control V paste. So I didn't have to type it for the XML file. We're going to edit the XML file. Of course it's got the seven set. And we're going to control V paste. Control, hang on, control V paste. Control V paste. There we go. So now our XML is pointed to the queue, the bin, and the MP4 clip that we will go and get in a second. Now all we need to do is fill in a little bit of more information from the actual website. So we will go back to Tomb Raider. There we go. We want to copy. Oh, it was just all tab switching there. People wanted what would happen. And we put that there. And we put that there. Let's just scroll up. Yeah. Core design and I just copy. And it's 1996. How to make you feel old. 1996. Well, it is retro gaming, so Harry. And the creative publisher in there. So we've got English language, PlayStation emulator. We've got the manufacturer. It's a one player game. It's an action game. So two, um, we've renamed the files in here to point correctly. And we've given the name details down to here. Okay, let's close. Make sure you save. Okay, so before we go and get now the game clip, the MP4, we're going to delete the folder where all the original bins were because we don't need them now. We've got it all in this single bin up here. There we go. So now let's go to the screen scraper FR and we need boom. And there it is because I'd already been searching. Search. There's the original, obviously it will show more because there was more than one Tomb Raider. We want the first one. It's already remembered we are on media files. 
scroll down, and again, we want the standardized Visio. Save as. We need to go to, before we do, rename Control C, so I've got that. We need to go into the Tomb Raider folder, and then we need to make sure we save the MP4. Save with the correct name, show in folder, and there we go. We now have the four files ready to install into your Pandora box. Simple as, I mean, it's a little more complicated, but once you've got that CD Mage tool, it's so easy to merge games that have multiple bins into a single bin and load them onto your Pandora box. Okay, so last but not least, we now need to do Fear Effect, and this is where you're going to see how to merge multiple disks into a single PBP file, which is what's used on the PlayStation Portable, but luckily the emulator for PlayStation on the Pandora, or at least the Pandora Saga EX2, understands PBP files. So, first of all, we need to extract. Disk two. Yes, we have a seagull on the roof. We live by the sea. Two chicks that I've seen so far. They come back nearly every year. So that's disc three, and now disc four. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create a folder, but we're going to save the file for the PBP, PSX underscore, and this one was fear effect two underscore retro. And of course, we will need an XML template file, so I'm going to hold down control while I drag and let go. Right, so that's that folder set up ready to put the PPB file in. Firstly, we're going to need to extract the tool that will help us do that. So extract the PSX to PSP. It will create a folder. And we go in there and run the PSX executable. It opens up this GUI interface. And you will see in the drop down that there has the ability to handle up to five files or five disks. I don't know the maximum disks for a PlayStation. The most I've come across so far has been four. I remember playing a PC game called Phantasmagoria and it had like eight or 10 or whatever disks. I mean, it was huge. Whether or not that's the case with a PlayStation game, I have no idea. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. So first of all, we need to select file one or which will basically be disk one. We click the dots and we need to find our disk one. There we go. Go into the folder and select the bin file. Then in the drop down, we need to select the file two. Click the dots, find the correct folder for disk two, select the bin, open. Again, file three, click the dots, Select disk three, open. And then lastly, the file four, click the dots, go into the folder and select disk four. So now that we've got all four disks loaded up and you can see that it's recognized the files as we've loaded them, we now need to select our output folder. And we are going to select the folder we created, there we go. PSX, Fear Effect 2, Retro Helix. Click OK. So now that we've uh, told it where we want to output the processed file and we've selected the files we want to merge, all you do is click Convert and away it runs. Um, it's a bit weird, the progress bar. It shows you a minus number of percentage done. Then the percentage goes greater than 100% and then it will go down and finally it will reach 100%. Um, yeah, it's a bit strange, but just let it run through. You'll know when it's finished because these options here and this drop down and that will no longer be ghosted.
and it will say that it is completed. So we'll let that run through and I'll cut to when that's finished. Okay, as you can see, it says done and it's actually saying that the final compression is 0%. And yes, you can see these options are no longer ghosted. So now that that's done, we can close the GUI and we can go back to our folder where it has put the PPB. You'll notice it creates a folder within that basically the ID of the game. We want to go in there, get the PBP file that it's created and drag it into our main folder we created and then delete. There we go. We won't need, there's no Q file for PPB files. What we will need to do though, obviously, if we go back here, I'm gonna do the old rename. Control C, so I don't have to type all that again. Go back in the folder and then rename these. What you must make sure you do is change the extension to lowercase pvp. I have read, although I've not tested, but it works if you make sure you change it to lowercase extension pvp. So let's do the rename and paste. So our XML is now the correct name. Of course, we need to go in and edit, and again, we need to rename these files. But what we don't need is a Q file, so we can highlight that one and simply delete it. And we need to change these names as before, but this, remember, is a PBP file. Now let's go get the other few details from the website it's for your effect to retro helix usa version so we'll get that there put that into here okay uh, last but not least let's check the year and manufacturer it's by idos interactive and the year was 2001 Okay, so Wales well, Interactive, year 2001. It's a one player game, I believe, and the genre again, two for action. So, job done, click close, save. Right, last but definitely not least, we now need to go and get the game clip movie. So back up to the search, in there we're going to search for, there it's already there where I typed before, Fear Effect 2, click on the game when it is listed, it's already showing media, and there we go. Right, mouse click on the standardized, save video as, we need to go back, again do the old right mouse click rename control C then go in the folder control V and save the mp4 with the correct name then do a show in folder and it will show you now we've got our three files the PPB the XML and the mp4 so that's it it is that simple to be able to read depending on which um, format it is it has it got multiple bins has it got single bin or has it got multiple discs with these tools as you can see it is really really easy to quickly edit everything rename everything and get them in a way that was then easy to install into your pandora box and that's exactly now what we're going to do but first of all before we can do that we need to prepare a usb stick now i have my usb stick over here and what i need to do i'm going to right mouse click on it and i'm going to do format when the format GUI comes up, you want to make sure you've got quick format set. <laughs> um, full formats takes a very long time. Quick format generally is okay. Um, you, what, what is important is you need to make sure it's X fat. And I select 32 kilobytes as its allocation unit size because that's what the Pandora tool all people do and it seems to work. And so I'm following their guidance on this. Uh, and I'm then clicking start. It will warn you that all the data can be erased. Yep, click OK. And there you go, format done. Before we can move these games onto the stick, we need to create on the USB. So let's go there, right mouse click, new folder. 
and we need to name it MC Games all in lowercase because this is the folder that the Pandora box looks for when you insert a stick. Right, once you create your MC Games folder all in lowercase, we need to go into the folder and create a new text file. So right mouse click, new text document, and we need to call it install.txt. So then edit it. And we need to go get the name of the game. So let's go back to where our games are and do the old rename. Control C. Paste. Press enter. The next one. Rename. Control C. You don't want to change anything. Control V. Paste. Enter. And last but not least. Rename. Control C. Okay, so there we go. So we've now got an install.txt file with the name of the folders with the games that we want to load. So we close that and click save. Now obviously before we can actually load the games, we're going to have to copy the games we created, these folders, to the MC Games folder. So that's what I'm going to do now. Right, there we go. That's going to start copying. Now I've actually got my, uh, it's a USB 3 1 to 8 gig stick, but I don't have any USB 3 ports free because I'm using that for my microphone, the spare one that I've got currently. Um, so it's actually in a USB 2 hub and it's going to take a little while to copy across. So rather than you sitting here watching a progress bar, which no one wants to watch, I'm going to let it copy across and cut once it's copied and I will show you the stage of installing it actually into your Pandora box. Okay, as you can see, let's just finish copying over, and so we now have on our USB stick a folder called MC Games, and in there the install txt file that we put these folder names in, and then the folders with obviously the files inside that we're going to load onto our Pandora box. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set it up so you can see my screen, and I will walk you through how we install the actual games onto the Pandora box. Hi everyone, CDC back. As you can see, I'm now switched over source to my Pandora box. So what I first need to do is turn it on and let it boot up. Okay, there you go. As you can see, it has booted up into the main Pandora's interface with the games list. Um, you should also notice that the boot up um, showed the DMO logo um, with my own little custom boots splash screen. Um, the reason being is um, I have jailbroke this um, box and I do thank the Pandora tool team. Um, I like what they're trying to do and um, the fact that they are trying to make this um, better than it currently is, is commendable and I have a lot of respect for the guys working and the tool that they're producing. However, there are some big issues with it, such as the reason I'm even creating this video is because um, installing games using the Pandora tool, the connection to the screen scraper program didn't work and it was erroring and it caused loads of problems and it turned out there was a bug and it wasn't fixed for the next version. And that's why in the end I thought, you know what, I'm just going to work out how to do it manually and then show it all you guys. So you don't have to rely on a tool that can break at any point and not work and give you a lot of problems. The one thing that the Pandora tool does do is fix the Dreamcast save options. I was playing Spider-Man, the Dreamcast version, with my son. When we'd finished, we saved, and when we came back, it hadn't actually saved our game. And since installing the Pandora tool, now when you save um, in the VMU save, it actually works. So yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to put Pandora team down. But some of the things they're doing, such as their splash screen video that they loaded, when it booted up, when I first jailbroke the machine, I was it was late at night, my studio is the third bedroom, and there I am working, installing the jailbreak, the machine boots up, and suddenly this thrash metal American hardcore band music just blared out. I mean, it was ridiculously loud. It shit the life out of me, and it woke my son up. And it's like, why on earth would you want 
every time you turn your box on for it to play this obnoxiously loud, horrible thrash metal music. I mean, you, I you don't. Who wants that? I mean, other than the Pandora tool people. I most certainly don't. Um, it was awful. And so what I did was I worked out how Pandora were putting their own video on and I went and created my own video. And I mean, the, the graphic I used for the Pandora box, I know that there's some issues. I didn't cut it out. It was late at night and I just wanted to, to get rid of what was already on there. I mean, the other thing that they actually do is this background screen, this wallpaper, they replaced with their own, but it's much brighter. It's a brighter blue and it really, along with the bright blue that you can see with the PlayStation um, portable logos and the, the white writing and everything, it was just too bright. I mean, anyone who has sensory issues doesn't want that thrash metal music blaring out at a ridiculously loud volume every time you're turning your computer on or a menu that makes it hard to see properly because of the glare because everything's too bright. You know, I much prefer this wallpaper because it's a darker background with the brighter menu you know, in, in white writing. So yeah, the Pandora team, you know, well done for what you're doing. I do support what you're doing. And the Pandora Box Forum and the Pandora Tool people seem a nice bunch. I mean, they're really helpful and they know what they're doing, but they need to just step back and just think about some of the things that they're doing and at least give people the option to add their own video or to keep the old one or make it easier for things like that that are really going to put people off or wish they hadn't done it or frustrate them like me or, or cause sensory issues it's just you know give give us the option to not have that or to replace it really easy um don't just whack stuff like that on someone's you know system because it, yeah, it, it wasn't good and i had to find a way to replace it which i did and i will give a link i might do a video on how to do all that myself um another day but you know we came to put these games onto your pandora box so we need to stick the usb in the right hand port it should recognize it come up. There you go and give you the options to install. So we press A and it's come up and showing you that there are a total of three games it's going to install and a progress bar. So it says installing Fear Effect 2, Retro Helix, USA. And the bar will go along. Now this will take a little longer than you expect. Um, so what I'll do is I will just um, cut the video to the points where it actually installs and goes to the next one and then I will show you how you access them within the actual game list itself. Okay, as you can see, it's come up success one, and it's now installing a Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro USA. And there we go, success two, and it's installing a Tomb Raider Europe. You'll notice the progress bar is now showing it as a fully completed. So yeah, it is, as I said in the dream, Last video I did this bar isn't accurate but it, it gives you an idea when there's multiple of them you know that it is going along okay install complete success three of three it should now boot back into the main Pandora game list screen we can take the USB as it says unit disk removed and now I'm going to plug in my game. Anyone who has watched the Dreamcast video will have noticed I've now gone and got a actual Xbox. It's refurbished from eBay. Green one. Because I just like the look of it. And it does this weird thing when you first plug it in that it will start playing one of the games. But I'm going to exit out. There we go. So, to find the game that we've just put in, if you click start it will take you up to the top category menu for search you can then scroll across come down and then move right to the PLA station games and then scroll to the bottom group it's the only thing sometimes you try to move down and you actually move left or right there we go and as you can see the three games need to be installed so three games we installed. Obviously you could click start, go up to search, let's say let's do Spider-Man. P I D E. There's the one we installed over there. There's Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation. Select it. Go. 
sometimes you can press a button or start that will fast forward a lot of this. There we go, click start. Hey! New game. Normal. And just fast forward all that. Welcome, troop believers. Ah, there you go. The game started. There you can see it's flying. What's got you bounding about? Not Sentinel attack, I hope. Greetings, my web slinging compatriot. I noticed perchance your diurnal patrol. Let's come out of that. We're not going to play the game. Just wanted to show you that that one works. Okay, what I'm going to do is go back to category, scroll down across into the bottom. It's just easier. And this time we're at the bottom, so let's select Doom Raider. It always installs the games you put in at the end of the entire list. Um, I'm not sure of a way of being able to sort it and get it in alphabetical order or anything like that. You know, maybe I'll do another video if I work it out. I don't really, it doesn't bother me that much, so. There we go, Tomb Raider loading up. To continue. Which buttons to select here? There we go, that one is Y. It says X, but it's not as Y on there. And we're starting a new game. Remember, there was 57 bin files with this game. And that's right, the actual analog pad doesn't work. But the gamepad it does. So some games you'll find that, that, that it, it's it's weird the way the uh, controls work on some of them and not others. Um, but yeah, everything. I'm gonna put out my guns. Fire. Okay. You see, brilliant, playing fine. So let's come out of that. Exit. And last but not least, go on to Fear Effect Two. That was the one that had multiple discs. Remember. Four discs, there you go, it's started. Run a new game. Remember, it's probably possible within the game to change the buttons. So when it says press X, it's actually the one that's got X written on it. And the one thing I will say, you'll notice how blocky the graphics are. That is because this is a 1080p high definition television and we are playing PlayStation 1 games that were originally 240p. So rather than 1080p, they were 240p. Some are 480i and they do look better. Um, but yeah, the 240p, I am looking into um, the Pandora community to see if there's an extra box that you can output to to scale it better because the problem being with the PlayStation originally being a 240p um, output CRT um, monitors and TVs could handle it no problem but unfortunately um, the high definition TVs and that because they use apparently integer scaling just see if I can skip past all this show you how the game starts and there we go, the game's started. And again, I think, does the analog stick work with this one? No, nope, I have to use the D-pad, game pad. There we go. So, as you can see, everything's working fine. So, yeah, that is how easy it is to install games with either a single bin, multiple bins that you convert into one, or even multiple discs that you can then convert into a PBB file that the PlayStation emulator on your Pandora box then works with. As I say, if I can find a way to get the PlayStation games looking better due to their integer sprite scaling that doesn't work on widescreen high definition tellies, um, then I'll do an update video. I've asked the community um, and also do bear in mind that some games still do not work. I was originally going to do Abe's Odyssey. It's a game that I remember playing that I was blown away with the graphics at the time. I really liked it and although it installs and it loads and it starts, none of the controls work. 
so you can't then go around the menu to start a game or anything like that. It just doesn't work. And I've tried various versions, the USA, um, the Europe one, and I've also tried it because there's a version 1 and a version 1.1, and I can't see them. They all seem to load and install and run, but then none of the controls on any either the box or the game controllers don't do anything. So there are caveats to some games, the same as I installed for Dreamcast um, Tomb Raider Chronicles, and it installs fine, but when you run it, you just get a black screen. Um, and nothing seems to load, it just doesn't seem to run. So I don't know why, as you see, some games, they work perfect. Um, it's not the method that we're necessarily using to create the files to be played through this box. It, it's the game, for whatever reason, and probably the emulator, or the way that Pandora implements it, as I say. I don't know enough about it, so just bear in mind that you may um, go through this install, load a game, and find it still doesn't work. There are a few. Um, Two, as I say, that I can definitely know from myself's experience is Tomb Raider Chronicles for Dreamcast and Oddworld Abe's Odyssey for PlayStation. But I hope that's helped you all. I hope um, you enjoy your Pandora box and you get a lot of use out of these retro games because if it's not for the retro community, these games would disappear and we wouldn't see or play them again and that would be a shame. So thanks everyone for watching. Until the next one, bye.